And it is time to get to work. We start Thursday, September 26th, 8.15 p.m. Eastern. And we have the Dallas Cowboys 1-2, and 1-0 one and oh on the road at the New York Giants 1-2, and 0-1 oh at home MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. A lot of these spots on Thursday and on Sunday on the East Coast have showers. It's not full rain. It's just showers. Uh, that could mean rain. That could mean nothing. We really got to keep an eye on things, not get too caught up in the showers uh, that are represented at this point uh, weather-wise. Uh, in this one in Cowboys Giants, it's going. It's supposed to rain in the second half of the game. I mean, how much of that do you want to trust? Uh, now it's getting a little closer, so we can trust it more and more. It's not supposed to be raining at kickoff. It's something that we definitely need uh, to keep an eye on. I have moved on the over forty-five in Cowboys Giants, and I have my first SGP of the season. Same game parlay of the nice. season. Uh, the SGP is uh, simple. I, I took the Cowboys money line. I'm not going to tweet this out. This is for people to watch the show and for our live stream on Thursday night. I took the Cowboys money line. I took the over 42 and a half. And I took CeeDee Lamb for a touchdown and CeeDee Lamb over 81 and a half receiving yards. I liked him apologizing for his actions. I liked what we saw last year when he sulked on the field. It was against the 49ers in that huge loss. He sulked on the field. You know, he was visibly upset. He was not a team player. He called himself out. He apologized afterwards, and he went on a monster run uh, throughout the rest of the season. So that's my SGP. It's already bet, and I'm on the over 45 as well. Let's break this one down. Let's get into the line history and the cash flow. Line history-wise, this is a five and a half. Giants are five and a half point dogs. It's different from... Last week, as the market was moving towards the Giants, uh, and they were slightly bigger dogs at opening, this time they were a five, and this has moved to five and a half. Uh, it kind of feels like this will end up at a six. We'll have to see. These are pinnacle line moves. From a total side of things, we have a 45 and a half, and this is juiced to the under at minus 109. This opened up a 43 and a half. I, I got in late. I got in late. I got, you know, the show's a day late, dealing with the sickness. I'm a little late on some of these market moves. And this is one of them. Uh, let's talk about the Cowboys. Oh, first, we have the cash flow up finally uh, as well. 83% uh, of the tickets and 88% of the cash is on the Dallas Cowboys at this point with 57,000 tickets in. 64% of the tickets and 64% of cash is on the over. Cowboys red zone offense through three games is 15th in the league, converting at 50% of the time. Their red zone defense has been horrific. And Birdie, you can touch on how much of these, you know, is this enough of a sample size? I felt it's enough of a sample size to begin discussing it. Uh, how much should we dive into a three-game sample size? But this red zone defense for the Dallas Cowboys is the worst in the NFL after three games. They're allowing uh, scores, touchdowns on 90% of opponent red zone drives. Their third down offense, ninth in the league, 42.5%. Conversion rate, their third down defense is stopping opponents 15th at 34.4%. Uh, the Cowboys came in off their second straight loss, 28-25 at home to the Ravens. They were down 28-6 until a late Cowboy comeback over the final nine minutes. Dak, 28-51 of 51 for 379 yards and two touchdowns. No interceptions. Jake Ferguson returned from that one-game injury absence. Six catches for 95 yards. He's a big piece. And C.D. Lamb caught four passes for 67 yards, lost a fumble. We ta already talked about it. it. was clearly unhappy. He didn't talk to reporters after the loss. We saw him in a sideline argument with Dak. Yesterday, he was apologetic for his performance and sideline behavior. I expect him to bounce back. Problem is their running game failed them again, and their running game is going to fail them all year long. Uh, the Cowboys combined for 16 carries with 51 yards and one touchdown, uh, while the Ravens running game destroyed the Cowboys. Ravens ran 45 times for 274 yards, three touchdowns, ran the ball down their throat. Cowboys defense could do nothing to stop it. The Cowboys are unable to establish a running game. And they still have a strong offense thanks to their passing attack. So it's not like they're leaving their defense on the field for way too long, although that was the case in the Ravens game. They put up 412 total yards without a running game. That's impressive. 7-13 to 13 on third down, 3-4 of four in the red zone, but their defense looked bad. Zero tackles. The you know, sorry, zero sacks, I should say, zero sacks. And, Brady, the one thing that caught my attention was zero tackles for a loss. The Ravens ran the ball 45 times. Not once in 45 times did the Cowboys manage 
to stop the Ravens for a loss, a tackle for a loss. That is surprising. Is the Giants running game, and this is a question for you, Bertie, when I hand it over to you, is the Giants running game so weak that they can't take advantage of the Cowboys' weak spot, which is a legit possibility here. The Ravens average 7.6 yards per play versus the Cowboys, and we're 3-3 three three in the red zone. The Cowboys have allowed 120 points in their past three home games. Uh, that includes that 48-32 wildcard loss to Green Bay, but this isn't at home. We don't need to talk about that. Cowboy safety Marquise Bell injured an ankle in the first half and didn't return. He was a non-participant at practice so far this week. So is cornerback Kalen Carson, who's dealing with a shoulder injury. They've already started out the year without cornerback Deron Bland, who began the year on IR. I want to start with the Cowboys, and I don't want to open up our first game by talking for too long, which I feel like I already have. So let's talk about the Cowboys, your thoughts on them, and if you would like to lead into the Giants, that works as well. Take it away for us, Birdie, your thoughts on the Dallas Cowboys, a five-and-a-half-point road favorite on Thursday Night Football. Yeah, it's been a tale of two defenses for sure. They haven't played like they played against the um the Browns in week one, that's for sure. It does seem like they struggle against stop stopping the run. I don't think there's that's two games in a row that they lost that they just gave up tons of tons of ground um, in the rushing game. That's got to get cleaned up, but maybe they're just not physical enough up front versus those power running teams. And that, that could be very legitimate. Um, the, I think you're okay with your thought on the struggle in the red zone. I mean, it is what it is. Um, you have to stop it or else it's going to be an issue for you all year. But I, I wonder if it correlates with these power rushing teams and kind of the fact that they're struggling at the line of scrimmage, uh, getting contact, uh, early contact, and these guys are just running all over them. So I, I think there's valid. I think that there's validity, but I also think the matchup matters. Um, and I think that definitely is something for this game, you know, styles make fights and, What's interesting, too, about Dak is Dak leads the league in PFF grades versus pressure. And unfortunately for the Giants, they're good up front and they need to get pressure and they need to get sacks in order to protect that secondary, which which isn't very good. Um, and then unfortunately, in this case, for the for the Giants is you're playing right into the strength of Dak. Like you're going to pressure him. He's going he's going to light you up. Um, I just think this is just a bad spot for the Giants in general on how they have to play defense. Um, and, you know, the Cowboys coming off two really bad losses kind of do get a breath in the running game, but the Giants running game isn't bad. Singletary's done fairly well. Um, I think probably the biggest hurdle for the Giants here is not getting behind early because if you get behind early, it kind of takes away that running game. And then if you let that Dallas front attack, which – we we do know they can attack and be very effective. Um, that doesn't probably bode well for the for the Giants' offense in this game. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at on that. I, I also like the fact that Dallas is coming off those two really bad losses and two really bad defensive losses too. Like they got embarrassed, and what a great way to get right than to play the team you've just pounded for the last. 10 years probably um and just just dominated them uh, to get right especially on offense i mean if if the giants if the cowboys defense is going to struggle this offense has to get first downs they have to control the clock and they have to score points and i think they'll do that today against the cowboys um i do have a few picks in this game so i've got the cowboys at four and a half but i still like it at five and a half um, if there's a five and a half left, I, uh, I'll definitely take the Cowboys at five and a half. I'm with you on the CD over 81 and a half passing yards. I, I'm with you. I think the fact that he went public today and apologized for his antics on the sideline, you don't see that with a lot of these wide receivers. They tend to just escalate and the snowball keeps going until it gets so far out of control. They ask to leave like digs. Um, and the last one, and this will be my, We'll call it the banger pod pick because I have to give one out, I think. And it's something that I've bet already that I think could probably happen in this game and happened two games ago is I like Dak with four passing TDs at plus uh, at 10 to one. Four passing TDs at 10 to TDs at 10 to one. Uh, Birdie on the Cowboys minus five and a half. CD Lamb over 81 and a half receiving yards is you know, I, we talked about that's that's part of my first SGP of the season. I, I made it a point to 
only bet them when I moved to bet them. Uh, not let's not. This isn't for fun. We, we're, this, we're not doing this recreationally. Uh, so, and, and I started doing it. You know, I had some fun with them last year, and this is serious. And, and so, I only want to bet them when I moved on them. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff coming from the chat that I want to talk about, but I want to talk more about the Giants, and then ask you finally about this total of which I'm on the over 45. The Giants' red zone offense is tenth in the league, at, cashing at sixty percent. The red zone defense is tied for seventh, only allowing touchdowns thirty three point three percent. You know, I, I I like the Giants coaching. It's I don't think that yeah, I'm is, not I'm not on the same page there. No, I I feel you. Not a lot of people are not a lot of people are. I I, I trust what Dayball does offensively, uh, and defensively there have been issues with the Giants, and that's why they keep bringing in new defensive coordinators. So there, there's obviously problems there. But I do trust Dayball and and think that he gets the most out of the football teams that he coaches and that the problem with the New York Giants is managerial. Uh, the the player personnel decisions have been porous. And, you know, there's often talk about you can't uh, – you have to be really bad to be good. And that fact that the Giants, you know, got off to the great start in the Dable area – the Dable era, excuse me, has uh, held them back. It, 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 it was covering flaws that, that were clearly there. Uh, through fortunate scheduling and good coaching. But we can talk more about the the total, because that's really what I want to touch on. And I want to touch on what happened with the Giants last week. So their third down offense, 17th in the league at 37.5%. Their third down defense is 20th in the league, 36.8%. They were one of the 0-2 football teams that step up, stepped up in a big way last week, winning 21-15 on the road at Cleveland. You know, in game three, we talk about the teams that are 0-2 covering the spread 65% of the time how I probably should have just taken all of them, you know, but the teams that stepped up, I think are still playing for their coach. The teams that fell apart, maybe don't want to be uh, in the room. And we can talk about those teams as we move on. D Danny Jones, 24, 34 for 236 yards, two touchdowns also ran eight times for 20 yards. And he completed 12 passes in a row. At one point, Goff competed for completed 14 passes in a row. At one point uh, it's, it's important early in the game to show that you're capable of, of, of completing passes in a row, getting a rhythm in the offense. And it's all Malik neighbors. Another strong game, eight catches, 78 yards, two touchdowns at 21 years, 56 days. He became the youngest wide receiver in NFL history to have two TD receptions. Wandale Robinson caught seven passes for 61 yards and Singletary. Uh, I still don't know if he is a quality running back. I've never known. Uh, he looked pretty good. 60, 16 carries, 65 yards, one touchdown. He caught four passes for 43 yards. He did lose a fumble. He does have butterfingers at times. The offense went three for four in the red zone. Like you said, the pass rush was dynamite. They finished with eight sacks and 17 quarterback hits. They forced two Deshaun Watson fumbles. But the Browns' offensive line is in horrible, horrible shape. We're talking falling mm -hmm. apart right now. And so that you know, obviously played a role in that. Uh, the defense held the Browns to just 217 yards, just 3.4 yards per play. Uh, Drew Phillips, cornerback, calf went out in the first, and cornerback Adore Jackson with a calf uh, injury got hurt in the third quarter. Neither of them have practiced with this week. All Dable had said as of this morning was they're not expected to land on IR. He also thinks that Nick McLeod, who's missed the first two games with a knee injury, could return tomorrow night. Uh, inside linebacker McFadden went off early in the fourth, and Slayton also got hurt, but they've been limited participants Participants at practice and are expected to play. So, Birdie, I'm on the over 45. Uh, if you had a free bet on the total, would you be going over this total? Do you agree with the market move towards the over? Yeah, absolutely. There's no way I could bet an under in this spot. The Dallas has just destroyed Giants. Like, just just destroyed them offensively. Like, I, I don't know what changes here. So the, the only way you can look in this game is the over. I'm just not necessarily a totals guy. I do have a few totals here, so I'd like to help you a little more in the totals. But um, for sure, the only way I would look in this game is, is to the over. Because, again, Dallas has just destroyed the Giants offensively. Just destroyed them. So I don't know what changes in this game. Uh, chosen one saying he's liking that over. Joseph Thompson on that over as well. Uh, let's review our Thursday nighter. Birdie on the Cowboys minus five and a half. He's on CD Lamb over 81 and a half receiving yards. His banger play of the day after cashing an 80 to one last week. And not we're not talking 10 bucks on it. 150 bucks paid 12 plus K. 
uh, was the Panthers to be the highest scoring team on Sunday. Uh, the banger play today here is Dak four passing touchdowns at ten to one. Uh, all I have is the over forty five, but I also have the same game parlay, and we'll be moving live on our live stream. 